of the reforms in the agricultural sector. Last week we had a big uh, meeting uh, had the pres with the presidency of the prime minister, and they quoted many figures uh, on uh, success. Um, the figures related to the uh, harvest uh, this year, but there are some elements uh, related to reforms of agriculture, to the development of agricultural sector. And um, a lot of work was done uh, on defining the strategy for development of agricultural sector. And that is one of the documents which will define the state policy in the sphere of agriculture. Also legislative work. Uh, we invited um, the representatives of the Ministry of Agrarian Policy to uh, talk about that in more detail. And there are other people who helped in uh, developing the document um, and um, how important this document is for the state, for reforms and for business. This is, will be the topic of our discussion today. Vladislava, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, thank you. Uh, you know that during the last several months we've been working fruitfully together with the European Commission. It was important for us to develop the strategy for development of agricultural sector 2015-2020. It is uh, part of the strategy of the country which was announced by the President, Strategy 2020. And we believe that uh, step by step, uh, the steps which are developed uh, jointly with the best experts, uh, the best experts, uh, not just international, but also domestic experts who are highly respected because of their professionalism, inviting business associations, inviting donors, inviting the experts uh, that were suggested by donors and also international financial institutions which helped us in the processes and businesses that were interested in cooperating with us and in uh, directing our work. So, you know that we told about that actively during this whole period. All the materials were on the website of our ministry. Everyone who was interested could uh, and see uh, what our working groups are doing and uh, uh, everyone could have access to the documents, could contact with the coordinators that were heading the groups, could ask questions or provide feedback in uh, online mode and when uh, present uh, in the uh, work of a working group. So we were trying to organize this work so that uh, it is not just something dictated from above, but so that it is based on real needs of business. Uh, uh, the uh, needs of uh, small, medium, middle size and large producers, everyone participated. All those who participated in production, in trading, and we worked in order to create uh, such a legislative basis which would be uh, corresponding to the tasks and needs we have. The main directions of our work were, first we were working on legislation. Uh, there is an agreement signed between Ukraine and European Union and in accordance to that we have to draft many laws. We had the working group in the ministry and then we organized the Euro Integration Council to work on that. Then, So we worked on legislation and deregulation. Second, the factors of production, market relations, and third is production, protection of environment. Based on that, we organized the seven, eight subgroups headed by the representatives and we would like to thank the European Commission for the support that were the representatives that were 
suggested by the European Commission and uh, every subgroup was also divided into more subgroups and this way we had 24 subgroups so during a month we had regular meetings there were more than 100 uh, meetings held uh, we always had the feedback uh, uh, online we are showing our work in detail uh, during uh, the meetings of the EBA, MCHAM, all agricultural associations with who we work actively. We have uh, uh, put it together into a big document that was presented at all these meetings with donors and during our final presentation retreat that we had in the beginning of July. Now we have the document which has the provisions and the action plan that we will implement, be implementing over the next months. First of all, we have a very well-founded strategy up to 2020. Then there's a part uh, on midterm projects for the next three years. And the part that concerns the next year with the monthly plans, besides we have a uh, clear cut action plan on eight of the on all the eight directions that we are working for, we also plan to present our work at the National Council for Reforms and uh, at the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine. From the point of view of uh, major directions of development and all the things that are already there, I would like to give the floor direct coordinators of this project, those who together with myself and our leading group headed the process. It is very important for us, first of all, the support of all the interaction with the European Union that we have, and uh, Mr. Ansa Demiani will talk about this and so that we have a very great attention concentrated on the support of agrarian sector, which is a major mover in the economy and uh, which brings quality and quantity indicators in uh, export and it is also the basis of our budget and the basis of our development and this trend will be, well, you know, this has been a trend from uh, 2013 when a uh, great part uh, in the export structure was uh, due to agrarian sector and this is going to happen in 2015 as well very important for us will be clear-cut work on the harmonization of legislation so we invite everybody who want to join us very important for us will be concentration of attention on uh, projects uh, concerning the development of uh, rural areas and support of uh, small and medium sized businesses in uh, rural areas and also the support of financial institutions which will work according to this strategy. So I give the floor to answer Danny on behalf of the European Commission. European uh, Mission. Mission. Uh, to this media event, um, well, uh, from the donor's point of view, probably this is what I can uh, add to what Vladislava has already described in terms of uh, process of uh, <clears throat> how we got to the final draft of the strategy. Well, we say usually there is no could win for the sailor does it, that doesn't know where to go. So the major issue at stake was um, when we started in the summer, I think uh, last year, was August or July, at the Canadian Embassy. When we joined the first group of uh, donors uh, interested and involved in the agri sector development and actually we were in a, in a position where actually we find out that we had a, 
quite a substantial amount of projects ongoing in support of the agri-sector in Ukraine. But there was something missing. There was not a fundamental document, a strategic document, which would give us the sense and the reassurance that what we were doing, we were doing in a way that would contribute only to the final vision for this country. So we were, the first thing that we asked us was how we can support Ukraine in uh, filling this gap. There was a bit of vacuum. So let's work together, all the donors, to elaborate a strategy document, an exception plan, which would give guidance, um, the political vision. And then on the base of that, when that has been decided and put on a document, on the base of that, break down into actions and measures and projects which would, all of them, contribute to one end. So this is how we started. So and then, uh, thanks to the uh, goodwill from the uh, ministry, thanks to the leading experts, thanks to uh, the private sector, civil society, we tried to start a process that would join them together with the end of getting down to paper a major document. So. Within six months, I must say that um, I must congratulate uh, this country because in uh, six months we have done something that usually at the European level would take uh, around two years. But we did the document, we, at the end we finalized together with the ministry and uh, all other stakeholders, a document which someone may say is not the ideal one but it is a fundamental document, it is comprehensive, which is something which is unprecedented for Ukraine. This is something that Ukraine has never had before. Of course, the work is not finished yet. Now, together with all, all the donors, we are going to point with our fingers in each of the areas and sub-areas where we can contribute mostly, where we have the best expertise. Some will contribute more on uh, whatever, land management, others maybe on green tourism, others on advisory services, agricultural extension, others maybe in irrigation. So each donor, we have our own, uh, let's say, best expertise to deploy in this country. So what we would like to do is that we can now point our finger on each major will be indicating the action plan for the next five years and say this is where we are going to help and take responsibility for that part. But it is not an action which is isolated or uncoordinated or is just dropped somewhere because each donor is his own agenda. No, in this way the ministry and the, the, the uh, civil society, the private sector, business, they all know that at least each single dollar or euro which is spent by the donors, it is going into the direction of meeting the objectives of the strategy. So at least there is no one single penny that is going to be lost somewhere with no impact. So at least this is already an extremely good result if we can get down to that. So this is the first part, let's say, from the donor's point of view. Then, uh, next, then uh, we have something now in front of us, which is the implementation. One thing is to have the strategy done, even if still to be fine-tuned. Strategy is a lively document. Eh? Uh, now the question is the, the implementation, how to realize this. So the strategy, first of all, we need to find out together with our colleagues, the best experts, and all the other stakeholders to find out what are the best actions that contribute to the final objectives. And most of it is to budget it. We need to understand how much it's going to cost, 
and then who's going to pay for that? Some part is coming from the budget, national budget, some part will come from donors, other areas where there are businesses which are contributing to this. So each one must have uh, his own role in the implementation of the strategy. It's not, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy to find enough resources for this, but at least we have the luxury now that we can prioritize. What is the most urgent of the urgent issues on the ground? So this is one thing. Budgeting of the action plan and start to prioritize the actions. What come first? Here everything is urgent. But at a certain point, as we say, Adiala uh, Karotka. So there is no there is no money for everything because otherwise uh, we won't be here. So uh, so you need to prioritize. Or you leave your feet cold or your nose. <laughs> so you need to understand what is more important for you. Uh, so from the donors' point of view, uh, both the European Union and other donors. Uh, they are ready to help, this is for sure. We need now to find out that uh, from the Ukrainian side, from the government, there is reassurance of the willingness to reform, to take that seriously, because this is a commitment. So that means that this strategy is going to go to the National Reform Council, get the recommendation to be presented to the Council of Ministers, and then to get the approval. And hopefully, as I understand, probably, we will have a part, some of the, uh, what you call here, I think it's a Lavoie program, somehow to be approved at the Verkovna Rada level as well, if, if I'm not wrong, but I think this is more or less the process. So the donors are ready to get involved more and more. The government is ready and the civil society is expecting reforms, so the process has started and the uh, Lots of work to be done together. Thanks. Thank you. And so, I want to ask. And now I would like to invite Oleg Samus, who was coordinating the work on developing the strategy, and he will talk about what the strategy includes: uh, the legislative, budgetary measures. I would like. Good afternoon. I would like to say a couple of words about the process of development of strategy. For the first time in the history of independent Ukraine, the doors of the ministry were opened for 170 independent experts who got united, both international and Ukrainian experts, to help Ukraine to reform agricultural sector. In the beginning of the process, there were many discussions going on on whether the ministry is the right platform for development of the strategy. Uh, we had to give different arguments, but the decision was made. The civil society donors and the ministry got united into the common platform so that they can find right uh, uh, solutions to challenges. Uh, and the decision was uh, right. Uh, when the civil society and business were resisting to the ministry, these times are in the past. Now that was one team that was working on one single document. The donor community, civil society, and the ministry united their efforts, and that allowed to find compromise on uh, many issues. We can say that the position of these three subjects, stakeholders, is coordinated, and that is very important to present this strategy at the highest level. And that is why the process is so unique. There were no two or three platforms uh, which would uh, have different ideas. That was the only platform that developed the, only, the single document. And we together will present it to the Cabinet of Ministers, Verkhov Narada, and the National Committee on Reforms. Besides that, the strategy is a middle-term strategy which provides for reforms for five years. But we understand that the situation in Ukraine is such that we need quick changes. 
Next to developing the strategy, we'll launch the mechanism of quick wins. And that is the process which allows to identify the drafts and novelties which can quickly be submitted to the parliament. They could quickly be passed and the result could be received very quickly. So within six months, many of the um, regulations were passed which already uh, produce very positive effect uh, in agricultural sector. And I would like to say a few words about what this is focused at. Uh, first of all, that is adapting legislation to e EU norms. Ukraine signed the agreement with the EU. But what are the specific features and what is in this strategy? We are applying the um, targeted approach to uh, input. There are different principles for all the subjects of economic activity, but we understand that today for copying the legislation, uh, Ukrainian producers need a lot of money. And this is why we very attentively treat the questions when to adapt, what is going to be the transit period, what should be adapted, uh, adjusted uh, fully, what partially, but all within the framework of the association agreement. As far as regulation is concerned, we used a new novel approach here. We analyze all the certificates and the permits and processes, and first of all, we compare whether whether there are such processes in the European Union, whether there's logic in them, and whether the cancellation of some certificate will endanger the safety of uh, foodstuffs, whether it will guarantee healthy food for our citizens. As far as the institutional reform of uh, the Ministry and State Enterprises is concerned, this is a cornerstone and uh, a very important part of the entire process of reform in the agrarian sector because this uh, strategy has to be implemented. And it is possible to implement it only when the ministry, together with donors and the public society, civil society, have an institutional platform, good experts in economy, law, and other directions, and uh, the successful reform of you know, the Minister of Agrarian Policy and Food is part of this strategy. Besides, uh, we provide for the creation of the Fund of Development of Agriculture and the Rural Areas. This fund will probably be financed both by the donors and the ministry. It's going to be the right hand of uh, the Ministry of the Agrarian Policy. It will be able to find best experts in different sectors and branches and will help the ministry to develop the legislation and policy. The land reform, Alexander Zemoida, who is the coordinator of this group, will dwell on this issue. But there is an awareness that uh, land reform is a very complicated issue. We provide, we provide for the introduction of pilot projects in some regions where, using different models of uh, developing land relations, they will be able to show which of the models is more efficient. So on the basis of this, uh, we would be able to adopt a decision which model is best for Ukraine nationally, and we will be able to say how much should be open for whom. The reform of the agrarian science is a very important issue because a business has to be, has to have the best workers, so we have to review how the Ukrainian system of science and education can provide the best cadres for the business, human resource for the business. Relations between business and education is rather important. A new approach to the food safety. We understand that at the moment we have quite a lot of inefficient methods to regulate 
safety, uh, this is uh, prices and export quotas and duty and excise. The strategy offers a new approach, a targeted help to the lesser protected straight of population. Of course, this will need budgetary expenditure, but this direction is right. And over the lifetime of the strategy, we, strategy, we have to work this program, to work out this program. Besides, the promotion of export is one of the important factors. It will allow Ukraine to concentrate on uh, those uh, markets which have to be open. As far as taxation is concerned, we understand that there's a agreement with IMF and other factors. So we provide for the transitionary period for some categories of the population, no, some categories of enterprises where the regime of accumulation is uh, preserved, also the development of rural territories, of course, the environmental protection and the efficient use of natural resources, forestry and fishery. And uh, 10 to 20 percent Vladislav and Enso said, well, 90 to 80 percent is now about implementation of the strategy and financing. And this comes both from the donors, but of course, donors should see that the state does support this strategy and the business environment. That's why the mechanism of joint financing is going to be important to implement this strategy. And there's a lot to implement. The strategy is rather ambitious and it will require a uh, rather long time and experts ready to implement it. Thank you. And to uh, round this uh, off, Alexander. Alexander Zemoida, the executive director of Ukrainian Club of Agricultural Business. No, not really so. The question of the land the issue of the land is one of two or three issues which are mostly interesting for business. The land taxes and the stability of the system as to the work of the group. Uh, uh, this, um, uh, the experts that were uh, involved are experts from different organizations. Um, um, and that all um, allowed um, uh, to develop a very good proposals um, and the um, improvement of the existing legislation, uh, improving the system of activity of uh, the state cadaster and the register of property rights and also that refers to the preparation to introduction of the land market and as Oleg mentioned it was several pilot projects were suggested. Uh, as of today uh, the p pilot regions were uh, uh, this could be done, have been selected. Uh, also, uh, the work is related to uh, the fact that we have uh, to uh, execute the action plan. Uh, more than 50 documents are to be drafted. These are regulations, the draft laws as well. And um, the expert group, which is 28 or 29 experts, you can imagine 29 Ukrainians who are talking about land, what will it mean? And I believe that when in September uh, there will be parliamentary hearings uh, held, uh, then uh, we will, together with the ministry, will be looking at um, how to execute uh, our plans. Uh, thank you. We have uh, limited time. Uh, one question, and then we can continue in the lobby. Ukraine form. Uh, I have two brief questions. Uh, you mentioned the 
fund of uh, developing the uh, rural territories, and you mentioned pilot projects. Could you mention uh, what the regions are and what uh, approaches will be considered uh, to land issues, the issue of creating the fund? Uh, and that was mentioned uh, by all our experts, it's very important. It is very important for donors to see the main priorities and to be sure uh, that the uh, money is uh, used transparently and correctly. And that is why we analyze all the projects which are submitted and also the strategy itself and the pre we, we also take into account the priorities uh, as to selection of the projects and selection of regions. It has been mentioned that there are some projects which we are implementing, irrigational project, for example, or uh, the project of financing small and medium-sized uh, producers, the project on uh, export promotion. They all specialized projects, and each project uh, uh, indicates the regions where they are implemented, the priorities, and the possibility to uh, unite another region association producers to the project. To answer your question correctly, uh, we need to look at all the projects. Uh, our task is to implement all these projects in accordance with their specialization all over Ukraine briefly as to fund. The idea of the fund is in the strategy and now at the level of implementation we look at how it should be functioning and after the National Reform Council uh, we believe we will have some vision. Is it the perspective for the next budgetary year or for 2017. We understand that uh, the financing of the fund from the state budget is problematic. So the beginning, uh, in the beginning, these will be international donors. And then later, the state will join the process. Thank you. This was the presentation of the development of agricultural sector in Ukraine. That includes budgetary issues, legislative and business strategies, because this is the business which should be planned uh, many years ahead. And um, we are transforming our agricultural policy, not just at the level of the laws, but uh, at the level of all the instruments. Thank you, and uh, all the best to you.